glad you like that. I don't know if you know anything about, about uh, that, that boy. He's called Kid President. Have you ever seen him before? Yeah. And he's, he just wants, his message is basically, he wants to tell the world that it's an awesome place and that other people are awesome. So it's a very positive, encouraging message. Do you know he's got every reason why not to be happy and excited about life? He actually has a bone disease. And as of, I'm not sure exactly what age he is now, but with the bit of Google search I did last night, he has already broken 70 bones in his body. 70. And yet, he's telling the world how to be awesome. And that's a pretty exciting thing to do if you're in that situation. So today I want to talk a little bit about best friends. So in 2002, I was actually working just up the hill at Greenpoint as a school counsellor. And it didn't take me very long to realise, probably about a few months into my time, I was only working part-time at, at that point in time, and most of my load had to do with friendship issues. So much so, I had my daughter Jess, who was this high then, lots of you have got little people, and she was in kindergarten. And I had Josh, who was not in kindergarten yet, he was a few years younger than Jess. And I realised that I needed to teach my children what is a friend and what a friend isn't. And I hoped that somehow they wouldn't be in my counsellor's office or someone else's because they actually knew how, one, to be a friend and, two, how to choose good friends. And I have to say, 10 years down the track, seems like forever, but both of my children have great friendships. They've got people in their corner that have got their back. They're good friends. Has it been easy and has it been perfect? No. We've learnt along the way, but they have skills. And what I want to teach you today is there is skills that we can teach our children so that they can have good friendship. So today I'm going to talk about three steps to create healthy friendships. But before I do, I want to get a unique perspective from all of you. Now Andy's going to do the writing because he's really good at spelling. <laughs> and I never graduated from the spelling scenario, so he's going to write for us. So Andy, if you can draw a line in the middle of the board. Now the first thing I want to discuss is what is an unhealthy relationship? What are the characteristics of an unhealthy relationship? Manipulation. Yes, that is. Oh, it's not a big word. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're a good speller. Right? <laughs> Unsupporting. Unsupporting. They don't have you back. Dependent. Dependent. One-sided. What about put downs? Anything else? Aggressive. Aggression. Okay, that's enough of the negative. So let's go to what we really do want. What is it that creates a healthy friendship? What is it that we're looking for, for friends for ourselves? And what is it that we want to teach our children so that they can have healthy relationships? Supportive. Supportive. You can almost go down and write the opposite. <laughs> Boundaries. Caring. Caring. Now, I really encourage you to think about how you can teach your children this side of the board. How to be this and how to find friends. I actually believe that you get to choose your friends. Don't get to choose your family. That's already done for you, but I actually believe you get to choose your friends. And you can teach your children to be this kind of friend and start to choose friends that are more on this side of the board. So, I'd like to start with a quote, and it's from Michael Gross. Has anyone heard of the parenting by Michael Gross? He's one of the Australia's leading parenting 
people, and he says children and young people who develop strong friendships have a definite set of skills that help to make them easy to like, easy to relate to, and easy to play with. So the good news here is that we can actually teach our children the skills that they need. And I'm going to suggest three ways we can do that. Creating space is essential. So grass is greener where you water it. Completely opposite to grass is greener on the other side. And how do you water friendships in today's society? I don't know about, is anyone busy here? <laughs> It, it, everyone seems to be very, very busy. So how do we create the space that we need so that we can, like Kev said, get down to the middle of the circle and not just be on the outskirts? So one way we can do that is, is like you've already said, sport and activities and things like that. Michael Gray said that we have to be very intentional about creating environments where children have to get on with each other. So if you have a play day and they're gaming all day, or one's on an iPad, have you ever seen this where people have been, as adults, they're out to dinner with each other, and they're sitting there with their mobile phone, one in one hand and the other in the other. And you think, how, what is this about? Is this about a relationship? or not. So we need to cre create, so you can do this by play dates, that's one way you can do it. Michael Gross would suggest that you put away the aggressive toys, that you put away the technology type toys, and you create some kind of activity where children actually have to relate face to face, and actually learn to communicate, and create this kind of a, a friendship. And the good thing about creating play dates is that you can get a read on how well your child is communicating. Because all children have a stretch point somewhere where, where they really need to work on something within their relationship. So it's really important to create space. Andy and I did this a, a few, few weeks ago, it might have been a month ago, time goes pretty fast these days. And we realised that we hadn't really connected as a family as well as we would have liked. And so I said to Andy, well let's go to GPK and let's Shout them out for dinner and let's see what happens. So we've got two teenagers, so we have a 17 year old, I can't believe she's 17, and a 14 year old, nearly 15 year old. And we sat there and we're at the table and Andy was so patient with them, he's asking them questions and we got, I don't know. And then we got the, not sure. And, and not really much at all. And we think, well this was great, we created this space, this didn't work, did it? <laughs> And then I thought, maybe we just need to feed them. So then the pizza came, and I'm thinking, maybe that will work. And then still got a few more grunts, and not much happening, and I'm just ready to write the whole night off and go, well, that cost us X amount of money and didn't go anywhere. And just before we are about to go, they started talking. They really can talk, so that was good news. But they actually talked quite deeply about some of their hopes, some of their dreams, some of the things that they really want to do in the future. We talked for so long that we were nearly the last people left in the restaurant. And that's a great example of creating space. And it's doing it in a consistent, sometimes it doesn't work great, but you need to keep creating the space so that you can connect with your kids, you can connect in relationships. It's the same with friendships for your children and for yourselves. So grass is greener where you water it. The next thing that's really important, so once you've created the space, what do you do in that space? Well, communication skills are really important. Now when you're communicating, you really need to be connecting. So how do you connect? When it comes to communication, research suggests that 7% is words, 38% is tone, and 55% is body language. So that's a bit of information just there. So when we go to the Facebook friends, like Kev showed us, we've already lost 93% of communication. 
If our children are going on play dates or playing in the playground, I don't think happens at Greenpoint, thankfully, on their computer screens or on their iPads, they're losing that opportunity to connect. And we live in a world now that is so distracted. Why are we so distracted? Because we've got emails coming in, we've got Facebook inboxes coming in, Instagram, I don't know what that comes in, but it comes in your news feed. We have so many things that can take us <coughs> off task, but it also can take us off relationship. So communication skills are really key.